Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at uh, n particles, and we're going to do a really basic introduction um, to goals and some basic expressions. And we're going to kind of learn sort of how n particles deals with expressions uh, through the use of goals. And it's going to be a very, very soft intro to it. Uh, so it's your, if it's your first time, first time around, then um, uh, then this might be for you. So. Let's take a look at this. So first thing uh, we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, a particle system. Now particle systems have are basically these little points that float around, but attached to the points are is all this information, um, and it travels around with the point. And um, we'll get to this in a little bit, but I'm just going to intro it here. Is you know we always a point is just always has position, and it might have color. Um, it usually has age, um, but it can also contain additional variables, and you can add these, um, and this list can be very long, and it can, can contain quite a bit of information to keep track of. Um, but in order to stay as lightweight as possible, um, the first incarnation of particles, uh, when you first turn them on, is uh, just has a basic set of attributes. So just know that these attributes can travel along with a single particle, uh, as well as few with the full system. And then we'll touch on that as we move on to Maya. All right, so let's go there. So if you haven't used goals before, let's take a look at what they are. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a basic emitter, um, in this case a volume emitter, and I'm just going to switch it to an Omni just to make sure that it uh, stays out of the way. And if I wind it out, you'll see that we get some particles. And just for clarity, I'm going to make those into spheres and give them a little bit of size up here in particle size. There we go. I think that's enough. All right. So by themselves, um, these particles will drop. We can add forces. We can do quite a bit. Um, but today we're going to talk about goals. So if I were to do something like add a plane now I'll scale it up here. What we're going to talk about is goals, which is a very simple thing to activate. Now, a goal is is a location which the particle is going to dash off to, and it's going to have a certain weight when it jumps off, and it has going to have a certain place to run to. So let's just start off by selecting our particles and just selecting a, a piece of geometry, and then going up to end particles and choosing goal. Now, why don't we just take a look at this option box. There won't be much in there for us. And so you can see that we have an option to use the goal weight, which we're going to leave at 0.5 for now so we can understand what it is, and then use transform as goal. This would just use the transform of the object, which would be the centroid. Um, so we're going to go and leave that off um, and leave this at 0.5 and hit apply. And we'll close that. And if we wind back and we run it again, uh, we're going to notice something strange happen. Okay, parts are going to wobble all over the place, keep wobbling, keep wobbling. Um, and they're just going crazy here. So what, what is going on? Well, what's happening, it looks like we're getting a ton of particles. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this again. But I'm going to turn my emission rate way down um, just to try to see if I can follow what's going on. So I'm going to do an emission rate of five particles per second and hit play. OK, so it looks like they're shooting out and then wobbling into place here. Now this wobble um, is due to the goal weight. And what's happening is they're overshooting and then they're coming back and back and back and back and slowly wobbling into place, uh, cutting that distance um, in half and in half and in half so that we get um, until we finally come to rest here. So let's go ahead and find the goal weight so we can adjust that and figure out more what's going on. So I'm going to select our particles again, and I'm going to scroll down, not in our emitter, sorry, but in our particle shape. And I'm going to scroll down here past shading, past per particle, and down in here, there is a section called Goal Weights and Objects. So I'm going to open that up if it's not already open. And here I can see that my uh, goal weight here is 0.5. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that into 
zero. Let's see what happens with zero. And I'll hit play. And things fall as they did before. Okay, so let's go the opposite direction and choose one. Uh, that's better. So now we're seeing them march across the surface here. And they're just going to keep doing this. And it looks like a familiar pattern here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. And you can see that they are indeed falling right on the vertices. Now this is the standard operation for goals, is that they will seek out the vertices of any object that you give them. And let me turn on wireframe and display here so we can see that this happens. So now we can see maybe this could be pretty useful. We can speed this up, um, this emitter up, and maybe fill up this whole grid here. So we'll hit play and they're jumping out. So this seems like it could be something it could be useful for lining things up. Now what's happening now is we've overrun and we're running back um, at the beginning again here. So there's something we have to do here. We have to figure out how to get exact number of particles onto exact number of vertices here, right? So let's just do a little bit of math now. We have a, let's see, check our polyplane. It is a default 10 by 10 plane, but it's a little bit of a gotcha here because if we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11 spans. So it's actually 10, um, 10 uh, edge loops, right? Not edge loops, face loops here. So it's 10 of these, but actually uh, 11 edges. So there's always one more edge than you are, than you have spans. So a quick little, of course, um, math, if you're not totally familiar, 11, times 11 is 121. So we need 121 particles to fill this. So we do actually have a way of getting exactly 121 particles, and that is to select our particle, jump to our attribute editor one more time, and find our emitter attributes. And we'll scroll up here. Here we are, emission attributes. And here is a value called max count. And you'll see that max count here is set to negative one. Now negative one is a common setting if you want something to be infinitely large as an option. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to 121. Actually, let's just set it to 10 and see what happens. I'll wind back, and play, and boom. We have 10 particles and nothing new created. So this seems like a pretty good bet to put in 121. And I know that I haven't been able to fill this, so I'm going to change my emitter to something fast, like 500. And we'll play. Great. So there we have um, our goals. And the nice thing about this is I can take this object and I can actually um, let me set a keyframe here and a keyframe here at 100. And I'll just do some ridiculous rotation here. And you'll see that they stick to that, right? Which seems awfully handy, all right? And even more so handy is that if I were looking for some sort of effect where I needed rows of things, um, this would be a really good option. And especially if I wanted to be able to um, work at a lower resolution and be able to bump it up to something much higher, um, even, you know, 100 by 100. Um, now our count has changed and I think what we could do is even check it out here we can say um, go to our display heads up display and if we just move down to um, where's our polygon count always lose this here it is polygon count so we can actually look for our verts here so if you'll notice let's go back to 10 by 10 Polyplane, 10 by 10. And if I select it, the second row here is our selection, and our verts is what we want. So there's our 121 number. So if we come back to our polyplane and go to 100 by 100, you'll see that our verts jump to uh, 10,201. So let's go ahead and change that. And I'm going to do it in the channel box here. If I scroll down. Where did you go? Oh, wait, that's the emitter. When I need, oh, 
don't play particles backwards. There we go. So there's my 121 particles. Here's my max count. I'm going to go ahead and make that 10,201. And I'm also going to make my emitter rate something a little bit more ridiculous so I can fill this up as fast as possible. And there we go. There's a good way to get all those particles on there. Nice ordered rows. And additionally, I can also go ahead and do a little soft selection here. And you'll notice that if I pull this up and pull this down, that that won't matter at all. The particles will adhere to that just perfectly. And I can continue to deform this object and everything that I would like to do there, and the particles will always stick to those points. And by, um, and by using these vertices, we can easily reduce and increase our divisions, even if we needed, say, rows of uh, something more specific. We can choose a smaller count in one direction, and then a simple readjustment, 13, 13, of our max count. And now we have different rows. So this is a, a really kind of the most basic interface with the goals because it has, um, it's still continuing to deal with the vertices. And this of course would work with any shape, um, any shape you want to use if you want to stick particles to it. So let's move to the next level of this. I say break connections. And I'm going to reduce this even farther, or back down to our default, 10 by 10. And I'm going to switch my max count back to negative 1. And I've got to be, be careful here because my emitter is set very high. So I'm going to set that back to just 100. So we're kind of back to our default starting place here. Now what if we wanted these to be distributed evenly across the surface? with no regard to what the vertices are. Well, we would have to kind of dive into our attributes a little bit more. Okay, so let's do that. The first thing to remember is that our, um, well, let's just take a look at how we do this first. So we're gonna go down, um, select our, our particles, and we're gonna move down to, um, oh, that's our emitter. And you would kind of think that this would happen all in this goal section here. But there's nothing here that really lets us do that. So we're going to roll up here. And we have this uh, goal PP in here, um, which is just a, a generalized value for turning goal in, goals on and off. What we really need to do is dive into this um, add dynamic attributes. And there's some attributes that are built in that we need to add to this list. Okay, so first, remember I said earlier that um, that this particle keeps track of this information. So if we look at what these particles keep track of, we can actually do that by going to our Windows, General Editors, Component Editor. Now this brings up a, like a spreadsheet of components and we've got polygons, um, We've got weight deformers, but back here we have particles. And if we right click on our particle, there we go, you'll see that we can select it. So I'm going to choose, go into particle component mode, and I'm going to select this particle. And you can see that there's our position. Um, we have a velocity component, mass component, and a goal PP component. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some new components to this, uh, new attributes. Uh, so I'm going to go to General, and we're going to go to, um, we're not going to create one of our own. We're in fact going to go to this Particle tab, and it has a list of all the built-in attributes that are kind of pre-hooked into certain um, abilities of the particles. We're going to select Goal U and Shift Select Goal V, and we're going to hit Add and Close. Now you notice that Goal U and Goal V got added here, but if I select this particle, there it is. It has goal U and goal V, but no value assigned. So what does that do for us? If I close this out, I'm going to switch back into object mode. 
go back and let's see the result of this. Okay, all of our particles are piling up right here. It's not just one particle. We can always check and see if we have things on top. So go to our count. We have 116 particles all piled on top there. So what is happening? We have these values, goal U and goal V, but they've got zero attached to them, right? If we, we can actually select all of these particles at once, go back to our component editor, and just as a quick little debug, select particle mode, go to particles, and select all of them. Here's all particles. We can scroll down. 115 and of course we start at zero so that's 116 particles and all of them have a goal u and goal v of just zero so we need a way to change this and then see what happens so the way we do that is we go to this empty space here we right click and we have some options we have creation expressions runtime expressions ramps component editors and delete attribute certainly don't want to do that because we just did it. Uh, we'll talk about ramps in just a moment. Um, we'll talk about runtimes in a bit, but first the creation expression. So let me let go of that. And this brings up our expression editor. Okay, so first thing we have is all of the different values that we can edit here or pull from on just this particle shape. The only thing we're going to worry about right now is goal U and goal V. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we just set those to a value. Now you can just copy here and paste it here if you'd like. I'm going to say equals 0 0.5. And use the semicolon here, it's important. And I'm going to switch to goal V. And notice that that disappeared. Goal U, goal V. So when you select up here, the problem is that you can't... Um, that it deletes your expression before you do it, right? So don't do with that. The best way to do this is we can actually ignore this part for now because we are just gonna work with this particle shape. So we don't need to preface it. It will do that for us once we create, save our expression. So we'll say goal u equals 0 0.5. And let me make this a little bit bigger here for you following along. And I'll say goal v equals 0 0.5. So we're going to hit create and we're going to close this expression window so we can see and I'm going to backwind and play again. And now our particles are stuck to the center and one more check-in of our check-in of our component editor lets us know that yes indeed we've set those values. So now, how do we scatter them all about? And what is actually happening? So goal U and goal V do exactly kind of what you think they're going to do. They're going to reference the U and V coordinates of our shape. So luckily for us, this is a parametric shape. So it actually fills, um, well, I, that's not because it's parametric, but this particular shape fills the entire UV, um, UV surface. So if I click on this, 0 to 1 in V and 0 to U, 0 to 1 in U. So our particles are landing right here. Uh, so it's important to remember that the particle placement is based on the UV layout. And if I were to modify this UV layout by squeezing it and moving it, let me just put here's 0 0.5, 0 0.5. UV, I mean, goal U and goal V of 0.5 doesn't mean center of the object. It means the center of the UV space, right? So you can see, once again, that our UV space is squeezed into this little spot here, and so is that. So that is not what we want to do or, or rather that's just something you want to keep in mind you want a really good uv layout uh, how your uv layout works is um, how it's laid out is going to um, determine how particles are going to react on your surfaces so that's just a side note i'm using this because it's easy right now so back to this creation expression what is a creation expression creation expression is something that runs only one time 
it puts a value on something and then it never runs again. So this is sort of the initializer of these values. But if we don't need them to change, then we don't we don't have to do anything. So I'm going to introduce you to a quick function. This is your first time scripting. It's the random function. And we access it by typing rand, uh, which means random, and then we give it a value, a low value and a high value, and it will pick a random number between those values, including those values. So I can just say 0 and 1. And I'll do the same thing here with v. rand 0, 1. Close that out. Hit edit. And now, whenever a particle is created, it's going to access these functions. And it's going to generate a random value between 0 and 1 and assign it to the u and assign it to the v. So I hit close. And we'll run it back. And now you can see that these particles are randomly spreading throughout the entire plane. This is great because that means that we can always jump back and edit this expression. And maybe we want to constrain this one to just a portion of the UV space. Close. Now you can see that we're getting a random distribution only in this strip between 0.25 and 0.75 in the V. So that's great news, right? So we can use this uh, to do lots of different things. Um, there's uh, no reason, you know, we could even say uh, sine uh, and cosine. Now, cosine and sine always end up creating something between negative 1 and 1, so we will, um, so we will divide that by, oops, sorry, so we will add 0.5 to that, I'm sorry, add 1 to that, and then divide by 2. This is getting all very confusing, but I'm just throwing in functions because you can, and they're all in the expressions and we'll edit it and just see what happens because why not and they're all bunching up there and that was a horrible mistake that I shouldn't have done so let's get rid of that let's go back to our random and random tried to be fancy and I screwed it up all right so here let's just do this we've got our goal u set to our random and our goal v set to, let's say, 0.5. Now to always, to use these, you always have to hit the edit button in order to enable it. All right, so the next thing we want to do is maybe look at um, our second set of expressions on here called the runtime expressions. Now, runtime before and after doesn't really matter. Um, you actually have to do something different in order to run it after. They always run before. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter which one you choose. Uh, you'll notice it brings up the same window. We can actually switch between our values here. So we can always check on what we did. So what if we create something for the runtime on V? Now the runtime does something on every single frame. So we can say goal v equals, um, now we have a constant um, or a global variable we can use called frame, frame divided by 100. So what will happen here is that on frame 1 it will be 0 0.01 and on frame 100 it will be 1. Um, it will be divided by itself and then it will move beyond. So let's see what happens there. So the whole stripe moves across, and then it gets stuck on the end. So this is what happens when you go beyond these values, things get stuck on the end, and it gets a little strange. So maybe this isn't what we want, um, but it is an interesting thing that we can do. We can even say, this is where our sine value would come in, um, but I'm not going to deal with that right now. We're going to talk about something else. So you can see that the runtime expressions move um, move the particles because they're evaluated on every single frame. Um, I could even say goal v plus equals 0 
0, 5. So now on every frame, goal V will get this value added to it. And then it'll just run across like that. Now that is interesting, right? Maybe we can even bring that down lower. Let's see what I'm doing there. There, they're moving across. And now you see that when it comes in, it's getting this value of 0.5, so it's always starting. And then each frame it goes, it's getting this um, one one thousandth of a value added to that. And it just continues marching across the, um, the field here, which is really interesting. So there's an easier way to get things to move. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this and move to my creation. And I'm going to delete my V value here. And I'm going to edit that. And now we just have a bunch of particles showing up on V0 and a random choice of U. And we're going to use one more option over here. We're going to say create ramp, right? So now I'm right clicking on goal V. And I'm going to choose create ramp and it's going to be specific to goal V here, not sort of the global expression that we had before. And I'm going to go to this option window, uh, the option box to see what it's going to do for me here. So input V is going to be the particle's age. Um, and you can see that there's uh, all of these things that you can actually attach it to. But the thing you have to remember is that you that this value is going to be between 0 and 1. So this is technically normalized age. It's going to map it to a new ramp. So let's see what that means. If I hit OK and I hit play, now they just keep running across, which is really cool. But I not quite sure what's actually happening here. Okay, now I did map it to age, so let's go see what our age is up here. Right? It actually turned our lifespan on because they were living forever before, but now it's constant. Let's try making it two, see if they slow down. Oh, so they did slow down. Okay, and if I make it random, make it fully random, what happens then? Oh, now that's really interesting. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, let's scroll back down and we can go to goal V and I can right click on here and then we follow this little, uh, you can't see that, it's gonna be off of the thing. You can see that we get this little menu here. We're gonna choose um, this uh, edit ramp and it gives us a standard ramp editor. So. We know that V is 1 up here and V is 0 down here. And so what's happening is that because we're mapping this ramp by age, as the age increases from 0, which is birth, to 1, which is death, it's going to move across this ramp. And when it does that, the resultant value is going to be this color value right here and this one right here. So when we look at it, it says, v1 that's the value um, so as it moves across it's going to reach value 0.5 at halfway through its age and value of zero when it's dying which it makes which is exactly what makes it travel across here that v value increases from one or decreases from zero to one as its age goes from zero to one and you'll notice if i switch this around this. Now my output values are 0 to 1. I'm sorry, before it was 1 to 0. Now it's 0 to 1. Now we're going to go the other way. Now this is really cool because it gives us a really nice visual idea of what's happening. So we could actually maybe put this in the middle and put this on the end. And we can say now as age goes from 0 to 1, we're going to go from 0 to 1 to 0. And we're going to get this ping-ponging action back and forth. In fact, I can maybe even make it race across really fast and then have it come back slow. And we can adjust this. Um, we can also adjust this by adjusting our lifespan. So let's make it a little bit longer so we can see what's happening and go back down to edit this ramp. Edit ramp. So you can see how it shoots up there and back and forth. And we can 
do all the things that we normally do with ramps, which is maybe get rid of that and change our um, change this to exponential down, which will make this race ahead and then slow down into that one value. Great. And then they die right at the end. So that's really handy. So finally, the, the last thing you need to remember is that once again, we are basing this on our um, UV values, nothing to do with um, position values uh, in the world. So that means that we can take this ramp, I mean this plane, we can once again add um, woo, there we go. Where is our plane? Come on. We can once again add more divisions and we get the same results. It doesn't matter. We can add a deformer to this. Just get that mesh deformers here. Nonlinear twist. Right. There we go, and it will flow right along there, right? Which is a which is a great thing that we have this ability to, to control these things. Um, just using simple um, geometry and we can see where it's going and then maybe once we have everything that we need we can hide that geo and these particles will just do exactly what we want them to do. Um, we have a couple other variables that we can deal with but I think this is a pretty good um, starting place uh, for anybody who has never touched expressions um, and wasn't quite sure how to deal with goals um, this is a good um, a good intro to that. So good luck with your particles and have uh, as much fun as possible um, experimenting with these things and coming up with um, just really awesome stuff. All right. Okay. Until next time, I will see you then.